Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I am Jim Baumgart, your host, along with Annette Bullabush, a lovely lady from the Elkhart Lake Thank area. You. And uh, we have a program today that affects most of Sheboygan County in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's called the Glacial Lakes Conservancy. Mm -hmm. And it's a program that allows people to uh, set aside specialty lands in a variety of ways uh, to preserve them for all times. And we happen to be lucky enough to have the president of the uh, Glacial Lakes Conservatory, uh, Drew Morris with us today. Well, good morning. Thank good. you. Welcome. It, it is a wonderful thing that you're involved in. You must be retired so that you have all this time available to do these things. Yeah, I, I, I think I got roped into this a few years this ago. This is a nonprofit, you know. You double your salary every year. It's and, a... <laughs> and, and you earn the same thing. Um, <laughs> some, people, some people don't understand what a, a conservancy is. Could you explain? In general, if you explain the uh, glacial lakes, you'll probably explain a variety of others that are scattered throughout Wisconsin. Oh yes, indeed, it's quite interesting. Uh, glacial Lakes Conservancy is a is a, a land trust. It's a not for profit, private organization. No governmental involvement other than trying to get grant money occasionally. Uh, and some of the rules that oversee it. Right? Oh yeah, it's uh, the rules. We uh, um, we have one and a half. Uh, paid staff who are both wonderful and hardworking and the rest of our organization is, is volunteers and there's probably I don't know a hundred of us all together volunteering in various capacities. Uh, as a certified land trust we are one of about 48 in the state of Wisconsin. Our area is a five county area we Sheboygan, uh, Manitowoc, Fond du Lac, Calumet and Kewanee counties. And we have our uh, properties either under conservation easement or under uh, preserves. And the difference is the conservation easement, a landowner makes a decision. He wishes to preserve his property for future generations. And he can put whatever, he or she, excuse me, can put whatever restrictions or conditions they want on it. If they wish to ignore in, potential tax benefits from donating the land, or restricting its development, they have to comply with certain federal and state requirements. And uh, for us to take on a property, it has to have some redeeming uh, uh, value uh, that, that we appreciate. And our basic desire is to confirm, uh, is to uh, acquire and, and preserve lands that have uh, water resource potential, uh, water conservation, uh, and working farmlands. And we have combinations of that. So. Uh, along the Sheboygan River, the, the uh, Manitowoc, uh, the, the two branches, east and west branch rivers, and Fond du Lac, we, we have some activities out on the escarpment where it drains into Lake Winnebago, and of course the Sheboygan River. Yeah, people property. wouldn't uh, think of farmland as being an endangered commodity, but it is. It's being gobbled up by uh, urban development uh, uh, and a variety of other things, and some of the people that own these lands from back in the 1850s just don't want it eaten up and they want to preserve either part or all of it, I think. Yes, indeed. And it's especially important if that farm is, is and many of them are, associated with a water resource. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sustainable farming requires not having all of this runoff and loss of topsoil and things, which unfortunately, due to our flat terrain, that's pretty hard to control. But uh, Basically, if a owner wishes to conserve his property for future generations, he, he can establish a conservation easement in which the land is never allowed to be developed in accordance with the wishes of the owner. And, and that devalues the land permanently. Mm -hmm. And that's where the benefit may come from. But most of the people we've dealt with who are donating either, either an easement or their land in fee simple, it's their love of the land. They want to see that that preserved for future generations. Now, if if uh, if there's an easement that goes on the will uh, or on the deed, I should say, uh, and that's then recorded in a permanent uh, um, record. Yeah, it's quite a complicated process. We we are required to 
be able to, to defend that easement uh, forever. And so to do that, we have to set aside certain funds and we have to monitor it every year to mm -hmm. make sure it doesn't change. So that if there is an issue in some future years, we're able to document uh, the changes that have occurred and, and then seek to have them rectified. Uh, to that end, we, we have our, our land team and volunteers who go out and monitor the property on a yearly basis. We have to write that up. It becomes part of the permanent records. Our records are maintained both electronically and paper. They're kept in safe storage and there's multiple locations and all that. To so the, uh, your, your, some of your um, uh, yearly uh, uh, reports go to the Secretary of State and it's a permanent record or, or what? Uh, uh, not sure. I, not, not so much that, I don't think, is that, that we have the records that in the okay. future if there's an issue. Um, the, uh, the, the, the monitoring process is key, and our ability to be able to defend the property is key in the future. To that end, we, we have uh, financial reserves that people have donated mm -hmm. that are sufficient to help us. We uh, are members of the... Uh, uh, Land Trust Alliance, which is a national organization that has standards that help ensure that we're going to be around, and also Gathering Waters, which is the Madison-based association right. responsible Wonderful for group. helping all of the other land trusts around the state. So but, you mentioned, you told us earlier before the show started that so far you've saved, you, you have 48 projects, is that correct? Uh, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, there's uh, basically uh, 23 easements at present and three that's right 26 three simple properties for a total of 1300 acres uh, at, yep on 1350 we just put another uh, almost 50 acres into conservation that the 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 windway uh, property up by Kohler and along the, along the Pigeon River along the Pigeon River it's our third property on the Pigeon River is it really and uh, we're hoping that thanks to the generosity of of Leslie Kohler mm -hmm. uh, will convince some more people along the Pigeon River to uh, to also preserve their property. Well, and that's a valuable stream that uh, we have two major ones going. We have a number of rivers going through the Sheboygan area, but the Pigeon and Sheboygan River are, are key to uh, um, a sustainable uh, water flow. Absolutely. We're, we're working with the officials of the city of Sheboygan to also preserve what the former Shookart property, which is uh, we've we've called the Willow Creek Preserve, mm. and the idea is to keep that uh, as it is and gradually restore it to the pre-colonial conditions. But more importantly, the tributary, the the Willow Creek, will be restored as a as a prime spawning area for all three introduced salmonoid species that we have in the, in the yeah, lake. It's, it's one of the few uh, streams and our side of the lake that uh, has reproduction of uh, uh, trout and salmon. And uh, you go to the Michigan side, they've got a lot of big rivers, but yeah. we, we don't on our side. It's a different... Well, we're hoping that project is going to move ahead. We've been working with the city on that for a number of years now, and we think we're getting close to, to coming to fruition. And we have two other properties that uh, we're in the process of signing, uh, one in uh, Mantua County and the other in Fond du Lac County. And one more in Sheboygan County. So we're, we're, we're busier than busy these so days. So if anybody has some a property that uh, they own and uh, they're getting up there in years and they understand there's some items in that on that property that might be of value that maybe should go into a, um, a type of reserve, they, they can contact you. Absolutely. And uh, we can help guide them along in their, in their decision-making process. Sure. What I want to bring out, because you and I... Uh, were involved in something a couple That's of weeks right. You're ago. Familiar with this. Yeah, well, yeah, my husband and I have been members for years. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to own property to be members. You just give a little bit of money every year. And I want you to talk about one of the benefits is are these walks. So every several times a year, you host a walk on someone's property or perhaps a, an easement that's about to be that yep. you've just signed up and I've gone on several and they're just so terrific. So well, the, the, the one we're talking about now was a, a organic farming operation uh, out near Adele and uh, their, their grass-fed uh, cattle right. actually spend part of their time on one of our easement properties right. that uh, the, the Beverly property which is right down the street. But we had a great day chasing cows around. We but did. Now that you mentioned the walks, I just have to give a slight plug. 
Uh, on Saturday, September 23rd, we're going to have a workout at Elkhart Lake, which we just had one with a color group uh, a couple days ago. This is a Generations for Generations event. Mm. Wonderful. And that's that young that professional sure. group. On October 1st, we're going to have a drive. It's a, a road rally, we call it. There's six properties that uh, are public access. Mm. Three of them are municipal and three of them are preserves. And it's a chance to go visit three of the six, three are south and three are north. And then there's going to be a little picnic and a, and a rally out at Dale Vogue Skills Place uh, in Calumet County. And uh, that's on the first, and you can get that information on our website. And then our next land walk, which is the fall land walk on October 14th, is going to be held at Point Creek. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's one of my favorite. And two of our master naturalists, Wisconsin master naturalist graduates, uh, Andy Raditz and his, and his wife, are going to lead it. Is that going to focus on a bird hike, which is, if you've ever done a, a, a hike with the Raditzes, you'll learn more about birds than you ever knew existed. So you spend well, a day in nature, you learn about birds and wildlife, and you are helping, by helping your organization, you're helping um, the future. Yeah. Well, before we go too far, we're getting uh, down to two minutes and one minute uh, for clothing. But um, uh, people that want to put their land in a, in a reserve um, can be open to the public or not open to the public. There are a the variety of options that I understand. That Absolutely. Right. And, and it's the owners in charge of that. Right. And, and so, setting that up. Uh, so in future generations, that, that would carry on. Um, the other thing is if uh, uh, people would like to... Uh, find out about uh, your organization and some of the trips you're taking, you, that website that you mentioned and you're going to mention again uh, will be one they can tap in on and they're just more than welcome to show up, right? Okay. Uh, at, uh, well, we, we like them to register first, okay. so we have but it's glaciallakes.org, G-L-A-C-I-A-L-L-A-K-E-S, and it's amazing how many people have different names for it. <laughs> But it's well worth a visit, and we have an e-newsletter you can sign up for. Every two weeks, something comes out. We have a, uh, our, our uh, uh, two or three times a year, we publish a newsletter. And uh, please join us, because it's just fun. It is so worth it. Well, and now we're running out of time, and I have to end the program. I do want to thank uh, Drew uh, Morris, who is the president of the uh, uh, Great Lakes Conservatory. If you want to find out anything, go to the website. There's plenty there. And if you have land that's of value, you may want to discuss it with them because the opportunity is here and uh, it's a great group. So thank you, Nanette Bullabush. And until next week, this has been Legislative Update.